So hi, Micro Punter here, Oliver is here. Um, and uh, today I received a question about uh, trinocular heads um, for microscopes. These are the microscope heads that have a photo tube so that you can connect the camera. And uh, the question is now as follows. Hi, I'm about to buy my first microscope and I've just saw the information about light split between eyepiece and the camera tube. So basically the light split between the eyepieces here and the camera tube here on a trinocular head. And I'm wondering what does it mean, for example, light split 50 to 50 or 20 uh, to 80? And how does it, if at all, affects the quality of the pictures, both in eyepiece and in the camera tube? And which ratio is best for amateur microscopy in a low cost setup? Thanks. Thank you for the question. Um, I think uh, you don't, don't have to worry too much um, about uh, which uh, uh, one of those two is better. But let me first um, explain a little bit uh, what it actually means. Um, what uh, many microscopes with a photo tube have is they have a lever here, you can actually see it here, which can be pushed in and uh, pulled out. And this kind of redirects a mirror or a prism inside. And in this case, when it's pulled out, in my case, uh, what I have is the following, is that the light from the objectives down here goes up here and right now 20% goes to the eyepieces and 80% of the light is now passed to the camera up here. And of the 20% which goes to the eyepieces, again, this is split up uh, because I've got a left and a right um, eyepiece, okay? So, uh, but uh, essentially most of the light is now going to the camera. When I push this in here, then 100% of the light is going to be directed to the eyepieces. This means that the image is, uh, of course, now much brighter. And uh, if I want to take photo to photography, then I pull it out and then 80% is uh, directed uh, to the camera. Um, and in other microscopes, um, basically it's like this, then you have a 50 50 split so that 50% of the light uh, goes to the eyepieces and 50% to the camera then if you change it then all of the light goes to the eyepieces okay um, now very high-end uh, microscopes um, sometimes what they even have is, is a third setting that where you can even pull it out even further or push it in even further where you then essentially have all of the light 100% of the light going now to the camera and zero to the eyepieces and the eyepieces are completely black so even that is a possibility um, and uh, the question is, is now which one is best or what's the, the significance here well first of all I think it has no impact on the image quality as such because what they're using is, is they're using um, if I'm correct uh, so-called uh, semi-reflective mirrors or prism systems in here that um, only redirect some of the light okay so that is uh, um, there should not be a significant uh, or there shouldn't be any uh, change in image quality um, however if you have have a choice now I would also say that uh, there are also other factors that are important generally I would say this um, that uh, I would say this if you already want to do photography then of course it's a good idea to redirect as much light to the camera as possible because when I'm ready to take a picture um, then I'm not really looking through the eyepieces anyway but I'm using the LCD display on the camera um, to take the pictures um, so in that sense it's of course a good idea to direct as much light to the camera as possible but then again um, sometimes what I do is, is, is I turn down the light intensity anyway so um, so what's the point of redirecting all of the light or a lot of the lights to the camera if I'm going at a lower light intensity you see um, what I'm trying to say here is is that there are also other factors uh, that are uh, relevant um, and uh, I just wanted to make it clear that 50 50 or 20 80 essentially just refers to the ratio of how the light is uh, split um, what I also have is, is I also have a stereo a microscope and in the stereo microscope I have a similar lever that can be pushed in and uh, pulled out and here um, of one of the eyepieces um, all of the light is redirected uh, to um, the camera so that means if I'm ready to take a picture and if I switch over the lever then one eye will be completely dark and the other one will still work um, just as normal but uh, there is a mirror that is uh, pulled in into the light path and this will redirect all of the light of one eyepiece to the camera um, so that is, uh, yeah, do you see the different systems use a different, uh, um, different microscopes use a different system here. Um, I would say that generally there is not um, automatically one thing that's better or worse than the other. I think there are other factors that also play a role. But generally I would say that uh, if um, I had a choice of a microscope, I would probably buy 80-20. But then again, um, if the microscope has a sufficiently bright illumination system, 50-50 is also going to work fine.
Okay. Um, also, uh, it depends a little bit. And are you want? Do you want to capture fast-moving microorganisms? Um, how sensitive is your camera? Um, you can go up with a camera sensitivity. Of course, this of course also um, is able to compensate some low light conditions. Uh, so that it depends on a variety of factors, and maybe even a little bit on the intermediate optics in here. To what extent it's able actually to bundle the light? Because if it's able to bundle the light more efficiently on the sensor, um, then you also have a brighter image. In my case, for example, um, it's not a very efficient system because the optics here are actually designed for a full format camera which I don't have so this means I'm actually wasting a little bit of light here anyway in that sense I'm kind of glad that I'm using an 80-20 system which redirects more of the light but then again uh, as I told you before sometimes I even turn down the light intensity even there are multiple factors I would say um, it would probably not be something that um, I would really uh, worry too much about. If there are other reasons or if there are any other reasons why you choose a microscope or not, then I would probably say um, go for those other reasons and not primarily for the 80-20. But then again, um, yeah, uh, if you want to do photography, a lot of light is always a good thing. It allows you to work at a lower camera sensitivity. This gives you a better signal to noise ratio. Um, you can capture um, faster moving organisms and so on. But then again, if your lamp is strong enough um, it's also going to work and it depends of course all on the magnification that you're using because if you use a highly magnified you work mostly with high magnification and of course you need more light you see so many uncertainties so many variables here um, but uh, i would say it's interesting to know what it is 80 20 20 80 100 0 whatever but it's not something that i would uh, yeah, consider or worry too much about yeah, there is a final recommendation that I have or a final tip uh, when taking pictures, especially long uh, term exposures using a photo tube, uh, because uh, there is, of course, uh, a connection of the light inside the system here. It could be that there is uh, going to be light falling into the eyepieces, bouncing around in there, and there could be stray light. Um, also going up uh, into the photo tube and this can cause some flares or some yeah, bright uh, sh places on the picture that should not be there because there is light going in there and going up uh, to the camera. It shouldn't be uh, the case. Um, and how can you prevent this from doing? You simply basically put some eyepiece caps on here uh, to make it dark and now uh, the only light that's able to reach the camera is this, uh, the light that uh, actually comes uh, from the objectives. Yeah, I think that's enough for today. Um, I think uh, I'm gonna leave it at that. Uh, if you have any further questions, please uh, write them down in your comments. Wish you all the best. Happy micro hunting as always. See you around next time. Bye bye.